what's up guys so before we even get into this video you know i'm about education and facts so i just wanted to throw this chart up here which dates back all the way till january 2021 till about march of this year now this chart represents los angeles and los angeles only but we can already see since last summer or pretty much spring of last year there's been some major price hikes in renting so i'm gonna let you guys know where i see us heading in this video so please please stay tuned and make sure you guys listen up all righties welcome back to my channel um I hope everybody's doing amazing but we're just gonna jump right into this because I feel like there's an elephant in the room with here um, I did a video on this last year going into the end of the year so now that it is month seven of the year we're in the third quarter and the year is about to end again we're pretty much coming out of the pandemic renting in Los Angeles and I mean hey this may not just be LA but LA is like number three on that high rent list so let's just address the elephant in the room and we're gonna get right into it when doing these videos I never want to come from a place of extreme negativity and like a downer or like you know that I'm above anybody because I'm not I'm living in LA I've rented I've pretty much done it all um, and I've been out here for 12 years now actually it's 2022 so I've been out here since 09 so I've been out here for 13 years actually so I've seen the rent prices change I moved out here when I was 18 years old and I was renting and I was paying my uncle rent and then I took the pride my pride was like I could get my own place I have a job and da, 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 da. and ever since I decided to jump off the porch let me tell you it has been hell um so I definitely have felt the effects that everybody is feeling but I feel like now it is just getting more and more unrealistic literally they are trying to price the middle class working people out of the state pretty much so many people within the last two years i think california has had the most relocation that it has seen within the last 20 years honestly i mean yes people move to la everybody thinks they can make it but there's so many la natives that have decided to leave so that kind of just lets you know where the tone is set and like i said the elephant in the room just a few pointers so inventory for rentals is extremely low like you think housing inventory is low like literally there is 30 people fighting for the same apartment as well as a house so i mean here in la everybody's fighting for a place to live everybody's just honestly i will tell you a situation i've recently had a client have to pay a full year up front in rent and that was the only way they were going to outbid everybody else now this client had just happened to have money so they were able to do that the landlord took it off the market and they moved right on it and like we had to offer a year up front just for her not to see anybody else so this is how intense it is out here. When I tell you everybody is just fighting for a place to live, that's why the homeless crisis is so big. Even all the way down to section eight, so many people aren't even accepting section eight and the government is literally paying the rent, but it's like landlords are greedy right now. And I, trust me, I, I come, I empathize with landlords because the pandemic and the world, well, the, the pandemic laws and regulations were extremely strict upon landlords. And I know like, honestly, the moratorium even isn't up here, but I know across the country it is up. So trust me, a lot of landlords that are not even big corporations that have a bunch of buildings, but a lot of small landlords that just have, you know, a two to four multi family 
apartment building are really out here struggling. So trust me, I totally empathize with those guys, but it's still some greed on top of this. So I, I, I definitely wanna, you know, just address that and let everybody know. The eviction moratorium was supposed to end on June 30th. Now, even though some, I'm sure there's some type of loophole with, within this system that has allowed people to start getting evicted already. I know there's even been some eminent domain um, and eminent domain is where the state takes over the building and then they just put you out. In those situations, there's just nothing you can do about it. But I know that they're definitely trying to, it's some zoning things happening here and some, some other things that are, you know, we can't get around. Um, so once all these people are going through eviction, where are they gonna go? Like I said, there's already 30 people fighting for one apartment just within the eviction moratorium. So it's like once the moratorium ends and these people have to move out because they can't recoup the money, where are all of these people gonna go? This is why I really fight for home ownership because landlords, once you're under a landlord, they have so much control over you that it's just ridiculous. If you're a homeowner, foreclosures are down right now because literally banks and mortgage companies, lenders, they rather you fight for the house, they rather take the pennies from you as opposed to going through a foreclosure, going through the court system, because that is already just a mess within itself. So foreclosures are down because banks rather work with you than even just go through the headache of, you know, having a bunch of homes that are, you know, delinquent and, you know, that portfolio builds up eventually. So homeowners are okay right now. Um, it's the renters that are really struggling and you know once all of these changes are made and all of these laws are you know implemented what are these people going to do rent overall is up 16 percent from 2021 so last year when i made that video in october rent was up 16 percent from 2020 which was during the pandemic so altogether, rent within the last two years is up 32% from pre-pandemic, which is insane. And I know you guys, I don't know how active you are on the internet or whatever, but I know everybody sees those little memes that uh, landlords want 2021 prices or 2022 prices with 1994 kitchens. And I'm just like, make it make sense because you guys are like really, really trying to profit, but not offering updated appliances. Like you're literally, you basically give somebody a box and say, here, pay $3,000 to live here. And I have nothing else to offer you. Um, landlords are really taking full advantage of, you know, the housing market. They know if, you know, somebody has to, move out of their rental and maybe they were shopping for a home they know that people are still have to find somewhere to live especially if they have families so they're taking full advantage of what's going on in the housing market and taxing it's just absolutely ridiculous right now and i already know like even if you're watching this video that yes here in la whether you rent or own it's expensive but when you own you do not have to deal with the battles of the landlord hey interest rates are at 6.5 or you know below 6.5 right now yes it still is historically low but Remember, your landlords are still paying these interest rates, they're refinancing. So anytime their bills go up, your rent goes up. And when you're a homeowner, at least your 6% is set. You know, you don't have to worry about it going up at all. Like once you have a home and you own it, that 6% is set for the whole 30 year mortgage for the entire time that you live there. There's no fluctuating, there's no up and down, blah, 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 blah. 
even even with the property taxes and you know and homeowners insurance now yes there are some situations where you know those things may fluctuate but your principal and interest stays the same regardless so if you're paying 2800 in a home right now you're going to be paying 2800 in 15 years that's why so many people still live in their that's why so many people live in their house for 20 to 30 years because the bill is always the same. Yes, things happen in the homes that are out of your control. You may have maintenance issues and blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, that 2,800, you still pay it for 20 years. Rent, you pay 2,800 for two years or really, honestly, maybe even a year because if you don't renew the lease or some companies don't even have renewal options, they just keep going up, going up, going up until you pretty much just move. And then they tax the whole apartment once you move out for the next person. So it's just, it's just really crazy out here right now. And I really just wanted to come give this video because going into 2023, it's still gonna be going up. It's gonna go up again, excuse me. Um, it is going to go up again and it's gonna keep going up but I just really want people to understand the home ownership advantages over renting. Yes, things can be difficult. Like I just said, maintenance issues come up home, you know, just as far as being a homeowner. Um, but even when you're in an apartment, half the, of the maintenance men, they come and just put a band-aid on stuff. You could do that in your home too. At least you own the band-aid. I mean, if you're in a rental and it keeps breaking over and over again, I mean, how, at what point do you get fed up and then just leave the whole, you know, apartment complex? Um, it's just, uh, you know, I just really wanted to come make this video because I know everything seems so expensive right now, but I will definitely say that LA is probably the only state where owning versus renting is pretty much the same price. So I'd rather you own and then at least you're starting to build equity. I mean, equity is building so fast nowadays. I mean, yes, it has slowed down, but home prices are still going up because there's still low inventory. People are really out here paying six months to a year in advance. Um, and they talk about inflation, but I'm like, y'all got money somewhere. And I don't know if you guys have seen like the TikTok videos or anything like that, that talks about, you know, that plays, you know, exaggerations on making three times the rent. You literally have to make $20,000 a month. Well, they want you to make $20,000 a month in order to rent. But if you're out there making $20,000 a month, I kid you not, you need to be owning property. And that's just what it is. I saw, I see videos, I'm very educated and aware of what's going on. So I see, I've even seen a lot of YouTube videos and news articles where they're saying there is millionaires out here renting just because they wanna hold on to the cash flow but you're not really holding on to cash flow because even if you have $100,000 in your account, it's decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and decreasing throughout that year lease. With home ownership, if you own it, yes, you're you're decreasing, you know, the month to month funds. But then after that year, if you have, if you gain back, you know, five to $10,000 in equity, you've basically been refunded just like, and trust me, I didn't always understand this, but now that I know, and now that I'm actually in it, that's why our grandmothers have lived in their house for 50 years, for 40 years, and they're not selling it because why? If their mortgage, I'm pretty sure their mortgages are probably only $1,100. So why would they, you know, we have to make, let the math make sense. And trust me, our grandparents' houses, they're already, I know my grandmother's house, she said she bought her house for $25,000 in Chicago, Illinois, on the South Side. 
I kid you not, her equity is probably already up to 325 just the way the housing market is right now and this isn't even like a super fancy house but she keeps it updated she keeps it clean so you know even if she's duct taping things and having you know the kid down the street fix it she's already gained twenty five thousand. she already has three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars like liquid over her head like if anything happens she can get that two three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars i saw an article that said the average rent in la is nineteen hundred dollars where i don't know nobody that's paying nineteen hundred dollars i mean maybe for a studio a small studio but i don't know anybody that's paying nineteen hundred dollars Average price here in LA is about 23 to 2700. Like I said from the beginning, this isn't to be a down on renters, but let's start setting ourselves up for greatness. Let's stop going out to the club. Let's start saving money. Let's stop spending our money on Starbucks. Let's start saving money. Now, if you're already doing those things and yes, like, you know, you've had to change a job, you're not in the same field, you have to wait a little bit while longer for, you know, things to align for you to qualify for a mortgage, then that is totally fine. And I'm not here to bash anybody, but if you're just frivolously spending and not being frugal, there's definitely some things wrong. And hey, it's LA, so we know everybody is more about the flashiness than the actual, you know, frugalness and actual, you know, grind and, you know, making things make sense. Um, I know all those people that live downtown and those, you know, the ones that aren't buying the condos, but the ones that are renting the condos for almost $5,000 a month, like $5,000 a month, 5,000 times 12, that's almost 60,000. That's literally your down payment. And you still can come with less than $60,000. So let's start putting things in place for us to become homeowners. Let's not let all these investors and all these landlords eat up all the properties and then they corner the market where everybody has no choice but to rent from them. Even if it's a, excuse my language, but a crappy condo, like in the middle of boohoo or whatever, get in where you fit in and start building from there. Because I guarantee you the way LA is working right now, it's continuing to get more and more expensive, but they're also gentrifying the whole, the whole city, pretty much the whole county. So even if you live somewhere crappy that looks crappy now, I bet you in five years, it won't look anything like that. When it comes time to sell, now I'm not saying you're gonna build up, you know, $200,000 in equity, but it is a possibility. It's, you know, projected to go up another 10% by January. So guys, I'm just here to let you know, let's make things make sense. I'm a voucher, I'm always gonna vouch for home ownership. And even if you have to leave the state in order to own a home, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, California is beautiful, the weather is nice, blah, 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 blah. But it's starting to get so expensive for the average middle-class working person that it doesn't even make sense anymore. It's New York, Miami, and LA, these are the most expensive places to live in the country. So, you know, we got to start figuring some things out. So I just wanted to come address that because I know I see so many people backing out of the housing market and getting down on themselves and settling and saying, I'll just go with a renter. As I said in my previous videos, you get in there, you take the market back from the sellers and you get, get out here and get what you want. Do not give up. But I love you guys. We will talk soon. Um, yeah, you know, I'm just here to educate y'all on what's happening in the world. I am your real estate economist. Bye.